Hey guys, today I wanted to chat to you about injuries, um, particularly all the different injuries I've had since I started running, the problems I've had, how I've dealt with them, uh, and everything pretty much up to this point. And hopefully a few tips for you guys about how to avoid them and what kind of mental state to be in when you have an injury. Um, and hopefully as well, once I've talked about it today, this can be the last time I ever talk about injuries. I've talked about it enough over the last four or five weeks in these videos. Um, it's probably getting pretty boring. So I wanted to do one video where I talk about it all, kind of explain everything that's happened to me up to this point so that um, I don't have to keep going on and on and on about it. Back to the start. Um, I started running about two years ago uh, in the summer. It's coming up to two years on the dot pretty much. I started, like most runners do, with the couch to 5k training plan. So I did intervals for the first few weeks, eventually got to do kilometre distances, um, and then you do 5k and then sign up for a 10k. I did multiple 10ks. I then did my first half marathon on trail. I then did a load more random races, a half marathon on road, another half marathon on trail. Then I started training for the ultras and I have an injury and this is where I am now. So that's for the last two years in a nutshell. So when I first started running, like most of you guys, you know, it probably hurt at first, your legs would ache at the end of the run or the next day you get some bad doms. But for me, um, I was having more problems than most with my calves and I still have problems with them. Uh, it started out kind of pain, I thought oh this is just something that's new, new runners get, it'll go away, you know, a couple of months in once my legs have got used to running properly and they never did. Um, so what tends to happen, it's not 100%, but when I start running my legs start to get really tight. So it's the upper part at the back, the lower which is the soleus, and then along the front, pretty much the whole calf, anything from knee down, gets really tight, really swollen, and just almost like rock hard and they don't want to work. So I've tried everything I can to try to fix this. I started with foam rolling, I used massage sticks, I did loads of stretches, I did loads of strengthening work with my calves, I was doing like uh, calf raises on the stairs, you know, everything you could think of, I was trying it. Um, I've been to see professionals where I've had sports massages, I've had acupuncture, done all sorts of warming up routines where I do lots of stretches, I've done others with less stretching, so I've done lots of walking in advance of the run, all sorts of things like that. So I did a run with a mate of mine, he said, oh, Sounds a lot like compartment syndrome. Um, I'd read about that, um, and I'd mentioned it to doctors and physios, and a lot of them said, yeah, that's, it does sound like that. So for anyone who doesn't know, compartment syndrome is where your lower part of your legs, they fill with blood when you're running, like everyone's does, but the, there's this thin layer of a kind of tissuey membrane around the muscles called the fascia, and that doesn't expand properly. So the lower parts of your legs fill with blood, uh, the muscles don't expand and they just get extremely tight and obviously that's painful enough on its own but then that will restrict blood flow so you'll get less oxygen to the muscles it can push down on nerves and all other things it basically becomes so so painful you have to stop running um, and sometimes it gets really bad sometimes it's quite mild um, and I found a direct correlation between the level of intensity that I do when I run and the amount of pain. So if I go and I try to run really fast, it gets a lot worse. If I try to do lots of hills, it can get worse. Anything that puts extra pressure on my calves, there like, seems to be like a threshold. And once I kind of push my legs above that, in whether it's speed or climbing or, or whatever, they, you know, if this happens and the only way to get rid of it when running is to stop. So you've either got to walk, or you've got to stop completely, or if you're really lucky, you get to jog it off. 
but for me what I've realised is when it happens bad you have to stop. There have been a few runs, even races where I've had to physically stop for a couple of minutes and just for wait, to wait for the pressure to go away so I can start running again. But over the years I've realised that because I've realised that intensity makes a difference, um, I started to run slower and it's not gone away but I can control it really easily. So that's why I've kind of gone in the direction of long distance running, particularly on trail, because for me it's about completing those distances and not about how fast I can do them. Um, there is a way to fix this, it involves an operation. I've currently been referred from my doctor to a physio. The physio said it sounds like compartment syndrome, he's referred me to a specialist. He said it sounded like compartment syndrome, but they wanted to rule out one or two other things first, which is fine. So I'm currently waiting for an MRI on my lower back, just in case something to do with um, lower back and nerves and that causing pain in my calves, which I get, yeah, that could happen, but I'm not sure it accounts for the, the amount of swelling that I get in my legs and how physically tight they get. So kind of hoping that the MRI shows everything on my back's fine, and then they can move on to the compartment syndrome thing. I get that operation. So, as most of you are probably aware, uh, my recent injury is an IT band related injury. It happened to me on a long run. I had a lot of pain in my knee when running downhill, um, and it slowly got worse throughout the day. It was my fault for not stopping. As soon as I felt the pain, I really should have said no, walk back to the car rest up, run another day, but I didn't, and now it's been eight weeks later, I only just started running again, so for anyone who wants to to do running and you have these niggles, honestly, the best thing to do is to not run, is to just take the day, say look, and scrap it for today, there's always other days to run. So I've learned a lot about the IT band since having this injury because cause I wanted to fix it, so I did reading, um, you know, kind of... Um, running forums about it, seeing what other people have experienced. I've read kind of medical journals and lots of medical training books about it. I've talked to people who've experienced it. I've talked to physios and sports massage people because I wanted to get a really good idea of what the problem is, how you fix it, how other people have fixed it. And kind of, not only do I want this to go away now, but I don't want this to ever be a thing again in the future. It's obviously happened for a reason. It's not just like I've turned my ankle and you sprained it. You know, that's an obvious thing. This, there was nothing that triggered this. Um, so the first thing you read is that IT band is an overuse injury. And although I can agree with that in, in some, some form, um, I think the overuse is, is an overuse injury when you've got something else wrong with you, when there's another mechanical issue at fault. So, if people don't know, your IT band, let me turn around, is this tendon that runs alongside your thigh. The one end attaches to your knee, and this um, is where you kind of feel the pain when you have an IT band injury. The tendon goes all the way up to here, and it joins to two muscles, the hip, the TFL, and your glutes. So, First thing I started to do was foam rolling. People were saying, do some foam rolling. I've learnt from my research that the IT band, being a tendon, not a muscle, is very, very tough and you can't really stretch it out. Apparently, it's stronger than a car tyre. So, if you think you can foam roll a car tyre, then by all means have a go at your leg. But the reason why this is tight, the IT band isn't tight, well, it's not tighter than it should be. What's wrong is the muscles that it attaches to are tight. So you've got TFL and your glutes. For me, it's for TFL. I think for a lot of people, it is for TFL. This becomes tight, so the muscle shortens. It pulls on the IT band. If the IT band can't stretch, you feel the pain on the knee where it attaches. So part of my routine has been trying to loosen up the TFL, so I've been doing loads of stretching and lots of different work that involves making this a better muscle. Um, and I've also been working on my hips and my glutes because they are particularly weak. Um, the TFL 
had become tight because it was being overused, because because of the weaknesses in my glutes and my hips, the TFL was compensating for it. And then on this long run, it got really tight, knee pain, boom. I'm out for eight weeks. So, that's pretty much that. I've got to the point now where I can run again. I've got to the point now where the knee isn't really hurting. I'm having to do stretches regularly because I think a lot of this is down to the fact that I've been working behind a desk for the last 10 years, sat like this. You know, this, this muscle is shorter. I'm not doing a lot of walking in the days, like my average step count per day is about 3,000, 4,000 steps. So I'm not doing a lot of um, walking, mostly sitting, and I know that's going to be a huge problem with with my muscles, you know, so I'm having to do lots of work to try and compensate. So along with that, I'm trying to do other things, like I'm trying to go to the gym and work on all the muscles in my legs, lower back, my core, hips, glutes, everything. I'm going to try and strengthen all of them to the point where when I'm running, it's going to be the most natural way to run because all the muscles are going to be working correctly and certain ones aren't compensating for other weak ones. So as far as injuries go, it is really tough being injured. I mean, we all hate it. We all love to run. So therefore, if you're injured, you're going to hate it. I've been injured so many times over the last two years. A lot of it is calf related, uh, but this time with, with the IT band. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is you need to admit to yourself that you're injured first. So. It, just don't deny it. Don't be like, oh, I'm fine, it'll be okay in a couple of days, go out and make it worse. Take a couple of days rests. You're not going to miss out on any fitness or you're not going to improve in two days. Take the rest. If anything, if it does clear up in a couple of days, you're going to be nice and fresh to go out running again. Once you realise it's an injury, you've got to do the usual things, which is rest, ice, compression, elevation. Do all those things first few days and then start stuff like stretching and some light exercises depending on how bad your injury is because I've had all the like, small calf strains I've sprained my ankle I've got the IT band thing so all of them have been slightly different but what I've realized is once you realize you're injured you're going to be out for a few weeks at least get yourself a bit of a plan together so just because you can't run doesn't mean you need to sit down sit on your ass for the next three weeks and wait to get better you can get down the gym and you can do cardio that's low impact on your joints. You can do stuff like swimming, you can do strength exercises, you can do core stuff. There's so many things that you can do with stretching. And I recommend doing all those things because what you want is to be able to come back feeling strong. So even though I've lost a lot of fitness over the last six, seven weeks, I'm feeling strong in other ways and that's really helping me push on forward now. So get yourself a plan together and so it could be like, right, two, three days a week I'm going to do cardio and I'm going to do stretching three nights a week. Get yourself a plan, write it down, stick to it because you'll find that having that routine and something to do over those few weeks when you're injured really helps you uh, like push forward, helps you um, focus on those goals and before you know it you'll be back and you'll be feeling strong. Now, I say that's me pretty much done for talking about injuries. I'm really hoping now that this is sorted, I can get back to training properly. I'm, I've hopefully got an ultra July 15th or 14th. Um, just a good four months away. Loads of time to train up in the most sensible way possible. And then I've got another one in October, so again, that's it's perfect. It's another three or four months between them, so I can. Train for one, complete the race, have a, have a bit of a rest, start training again. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. The next time you see me, hopefully we'll be out running and I can show you some awesome trail scenery around here. Uh, for now though, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.